not everything I do will work for everyone, but I've just sort of uh, decided to share some of this stuff and uh, give you some ideas of how to manage your own live tweeting and updating. So, so we'll start with what you're actually here for, which is um, my mistakes. <laughs> so first um, is Elvis story code. This is probably the most embarrassing one I've got. Um, at about 3 a.m. Uh, one night during the Sochi games, uh, there was some figure skating competition going on. I believe the early short programs for the men's. And we were talking about some figure skating facts, and Elba Stoiko was all over Sochi. Um, so, just a sec, sorry. <coughs> So since Elvis was all over Sochi, we were like, what can we talk about with Elvis? And I was like, oh, Elvis was the first to land a quad competition, wasn't he? And we were all like, yeah, yeah, he was the first one to do that. <laughs> so I tweeted that out, and like within minutes, not only Elvis Joyko, but probably about 5,000 figure skating fans were like, no, that was Kurt Browning. And Elvis is like, no, that wasn't me, that was Chris Browning, I was the first one to land a quad combo competition. And so, of course, I look it up on Wikipedia. And, you know, Elvis isn't going to lie about that either. And so I quickly, you know, corrected myself and apologized to everyone, etc. Granted, it was in the middle of the night, but also most of the country was staying up all night to watch things. So that was pretty embarrassing. And that was on the CBC Olympics account. So that was awesome. Good me. Good for me. Go me. Another thing is I was doing X Company. It was the premiere of X Company, which is a pretty awesome show. I quite enjoy it. I had to watch it five times a night last year, and I found new and interesting things in it all the time, which is surprising. Um, but the first episode, I was tweeting about the main character, and I called him Albert. His name is Albert. It was partially a typo, and it was partially because I was trying to type really fast. Dustin Milligan, the very handsome man to the far left there, corrected me and said his name is Alfred. I said, thank you. That was a typo. <laughs> From the X Company account. So, corrected by one of the main actors on the show. Not so great. Also, on my personal account, I had my spelling corrected by my store crush Wes, who's a teacher in real life, as well as on his show, apparently. So these are things that you want to avoid. How do you avoid them? <coughs> First one is scripting. It's like a secret weapon that's totally not secret because if you were going to put on a play, you would not put on a play without a script. If you were going to do a commercial, you wouldn't do a commercial without a script. Why would you live tweet anything without a script? It sounds crazy. Um, but people do it all the time. Um, why would you do live updates with other script? It makes no sense. It seems like it would be really easy to be funny and entertaining and have all of the right updates and all of the right things that you want to do off the top of your head, but when you're into it and it's only an hour or you have probably, I don't know, 20 events happening in an evening that you have to update, you're not going to remember anything. You're not going to be entertaining. You're not going to do it right. So having a script, script is a good idea. Um, to start, I'll show you a couple of things. Uh, this is a script that I did for X Company last year. So I'm on school. I do it in text edit because um, that's where I'm happy. And we'll just zoom in on it. <laughs> so I even put in the emojis that I use. I like to use a lot of emojis. Um, because they entertain me and they entertain the X Company audience. Um, so I put all those in. I put pretty much everything that I'm doing in. And where it says cap and gif up there are screen, screen grabs and gifs that I've made in advance. Um, that's pretty important to do too because you're not going to have time to do that. Um, and you see that those times on there are uh, times that are basically set up so you know when to tweet them, not when to schedule them, because I don't trust scheduling with um, live tweets. <coughs> Sorry, I have a cold, so my first name is a little scratchy. Um, so yeah, I don't trust scheduling with live tweets. I don't trust scheduling with um, anything that's happening really, really quickly. 
it doesn't make a lot of sense because you're going to have to do it like in every minute and setting it up. Sometimes there's a delay, and so if you're <coughs> watching it and something happens and you see your tweet go out like a minute after, it's super frustrating. So you have to kind of be watching and say, oh, okay, when, you know, you yell out loud at someone getting a needle in the chest, which is what happened. I mean, like 50 years before Pulp Fiction, this guy gets like a adrenaline needle in the chest. You want to know if that's the moment where that adrenaline needle happened, not like 30 seconds later. So there's that. And yeah, I would script it the night like this. I don't, we didn't live tweet all through coast to coast like this. We would do a few tweets in each time zone and then a few more on the west coast. But this is basically the east coast for X company, my setup. And uh, we would retweet or, you know, respond to a few people in there. And uh, kind of, it's not written in stone. It's something that you can kind of modify along the way. If something's not working or you look at something and you're like, that's actually not that funny, or somebody said this better, you can always quote tweet them and change that up or whatever. Um, Facebook is starting to be a good place for this too. They've had some really good numbers that indicate that people between the commercial breaks are talking uh, about shows like The Bachelor, Empire, other shows like that. So it might be something to consider this sort of strategy for Facebook as well if you're timing it not for the show but for the commercial breaks because I don't tend to have a lot of updates for the breaks because in Twitter people don't talk as much on the breaks. There's like less commentary a little bit but um, people tend to react to what's happening on the show a lot. Sure. How would this differ for if you're doing it for live sports versus it's coming? I got one right now, so we'll move on. We'll move on, then you can ask your question. Uh, question. Uh, so are you saying then the data shows that, so on Twitter it's more like in a moment while people are watching in real time? I would say that's anecdotal, we'll have to see. Um, like that's my kind of perception. Yeah. But uh, definitely the data shows on Facebook that it, that it, it peaks during the breaks. commercial breaks. Like people basically go onto Facebook in the commercials yeah. to talk to people. Uh, Twitter, that's my kind of yeah. observation. No, I, I'm with you on that part. I was more on Facebook's what I was getting. Yeah, Facebook has some data now that they're basically cool. like seeing those peaks, especially for things like Empire, Bachelor, those sorts Very of things. Uh, okay, give me any uh, Nicole, just on your script right here, you have cap and gif. Do you name them? Do you have a formula? Have you ever put the wrong screen cap and the wrong gif? Um, Or the minute? Or the minute, or uh, even like Harry shocked, or like Sinclair angry, or something like that, because then at least you know what they were. Um, like something that would indicate where you want to do it, and then you could put, I have put in before, this is not a good example, but I have put in the file names in the past. It's probably a good habit to get into. I am sometimes lazy, I admit, and I don't notate this for the session. Sorry. Okay, so you tweet this up ahead of time or you put on a landing page or how do people know you're gonna live tweeting? Uh, we tell we just um, we tell people that we're going to be doing it, but also it's building an expectation. So it's like people just know that during the show there will be these updates after a while. Um, you can say join in with us and we live tweet the show. But Empire doesn't even really do that anymore. There's like a few kind of updates about that. But, you know, basically what they say at the beginning of the show is, you know, it's 30 minutes to Empire in Eastern. It's five minutes to Empire in Eastern. And then they start putting out the gifts and the reactions and things like that. Sure. You have ever had anybody on the West Coast complain about um, spoilers? Spoilers? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we've, we, the spoiler complaints have uh, sort of died down. Um, we definitely get complaints about spoilers. Um, the situation is just sort of, uh, we've accepted that spoilers are, are gonna happen. Um, a lot of people have started watching things on East Coast feeds though, to avoid that situation. <coughs> um, but yeah, um, we just sort of accept that, that spoilers will happen and people will try to avoid them or not as they wish. Sure. So are you saying that you uh, live tweet during like one time zone of the show, or do you live tweet during multiple? Um, it depends on the show. Uh, recently, strategy has been to live tweet Eastern, um, a little like kind of like Central Canada X companies coming up, and then Thanksgiving.
watching with us throughout the rest of the country and then live tweet parts of the West Coast because those are where the biggest numbers are. And there, there was another question. also be like, you know, Neil seems convinced, but should he be? Or you could change that to, to should Neil be convinced? What do you think? You know, yeah. like, it's a little cheesy, but it works for what it is. Sure. Has there been any thought of if somebody's re-watching a show later, how they could watch some of those, those streams, they're not watching <coughs> anymore, but at least they'll see the Twitter feed, or if they're streaming a show, how you can see sort of compressed streams and I've seen some, like, I saw a long time ago an app that was like, talking about doing, like, a Twitter rewind thing, yeah. where you could watch the tweets it, of your favorite show with this show, even though, but I didn't see it go anywhere. I was like, good idea, guys. I really like it. And then I didn't hear much from them, unfortunately. I'm going to show you guys um, my panic script, which I thankfully saved, so I wasn't sure about it. So this is much longer, but I'm going to zoom in. <laughs> so this is day 12 of the Pan Am Games at the top, which you can't really see, unfortunately, sorry, is um, just a link to the online listings. And um, I don't know why I have the trolley, but I probably just didn't put times up at the top because it was right at 4 o'clock. So it was as soon as I came on ship. So those are some tweets and some updates that I would put up. Live Women's Beach Volleyball, which was always a big hit. Uh, live Pan Am tonight with uh, Sports Weekend Scott or, and uh, Andy Petrillo, right? And so, reminder, fan of the day, something that I had to put out as a uh, sponsor. <coughs> Volunteer photo of the day, another sponsor element. Live blog, something that we had to constantly update. These were reminders for me. And uh, something I did want to mention is it's important to have multiple reminders uh, as well as your script because if you're in a long haul event like the Pan Am Games or the Olympics where you're like working every day, you're working for 14, 16 days straight, you're going to rely on this way too much. And so if you screw up and don't put something in this, you're going to be like, oh, that's not, I, I'm just relying on the script. I didn't put something in it. Oh, well, it's not. It's out of my mind. So one day, we were trying to build an expectation that we were doing behind the scenes periscopes every night. Didn't put the behind the scenes periscope in my script. Forgot about it. Not very good if you're trying to build an expectation with an audience that every time, day at this time, we're going to have the same thing. So it's good to build in multiple ways, calendar reminders, other things, alarms, <laughs> etc. So, um, yeah, especially if you're working something that's that's going to tire you out, make sure you have other things to put yourself together and keep yourself reminded. So these are all the streams that I was putting out: track and field, men's basketball, women's soccer. Then we had people in the field. So Anson Henry at track and field, Kyle at basketball. Reminders to say all of these guys for periscopes and live tweets from the field. Um, more, more streams. Watch Andrea Dubrovs live on the 100 meters event semis. That was an exciting day, I gotta tell you. Um, quarterfinal match, trophy at boxing, and all of the stars next to these uh, meant that I had to put those in. So that basically meant this is done. You don't need to worry about it. Question mark meant I don't know what's happening with trophy. I'm like, where is trophy? So this is sort of how I scripted out my night. That's only till eight o'clock. It went till midnight. It was a very long day. Um, it was very cool though. Um, and basically, I feel like 
that's sort of the best way to do it, and that's just sort of your start for your evening as far as a live sport of the event goes, because more stuff will come up. People will show up, people will want more interviews, people will need retweets, so on. Do you have shorter links when you put them out on Twitter? Sorry? Do you short your links when you put them out on Twitter? Uh, Twitter shortens them for us for the most part, but we were shortening them for Facebook because they look ugly. Um, and that's like the main reason. If if we do that, if they're not if they're not a link like a, an embedded link, if they're an embedded link, we just once they're embedded, we always remove the link because they look nicer. But Twitter shortens them themselves, so it doesn't look too bad in Twitter at least. For these live events, are you creating um, creative as well, so like gifts, video, uh, shareables? Yes, we are. Going through. What, what does that team look like? Um, well, I'll show you actually some preparation stuff, but that team was actually, it was about two shifts of two people, so um, we were both very busy, and we divided things up a little bit, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, but we also, for Pan Am, which is one thing really cool that we had, was we had one person, we had some um, students helping us out from a uh, sports uh, journalism class, and we had one guy who was on Snappy TV for us the whole time. And Snappy's a really cool thing where you can basically bring the feed of a broadcast into, um, it's owned by Twitter, you can bring the feed of a broadcast into Snappy and clip or gif things live. So Steven would sit there and clip and gif things all day and uh, bring out basically metal moments, funny gifs, anything cool that we could pump out Snappy, can you spell that? Snappy, it's uh, like snappy, like snapping a, a picture of TV. And I'll have actually the actual logo up there because it's a cool thing I wanted to talk about. <coughs> so preparation, and it is things like, you need to get these things ready. It's things like gifts. Instagram 
and gathering photos to send for people to distribute. Um, if you were on the ground at an award show, it might be good to divide people up in terms of you get video, you get photos, you do the red carpet, you interview people and send them all to one person who's on a laptop and disseminates all that stuff. Out. Or if you're on, it might make more sense to divide by platform. And if you're in an office, it might make the most sense to say you take Twitter, you take Facebook and Instagram, you do this for the today and, and you do the paint or you do the snap. It, it's a matter of just knowing who's doing what what their responsibilities are and when they're supposed to do it. And making sure that all your elements are covered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also important is voice in these situations because either people are often hired just for this one event or um, you're working for a big brand. And so that's pretty important. Um, what I sound like when I'm tweeting Empire for myself is hugely different than what I sound like or um, tweeting a sports event, um, it would, which is different than what I sound like for a daytime show or X for me or etc. So the most important thing is to know if you're developing the voice for a brand, what you are, but more importantly, what you're not. It's important to know, like, are we, you know, classy? Are we this, that, the other thing? Are we creative, friendly, uh, entertaining? But it's also important to know we're not crass. Those are good things to know. Like, some people can get away with that kind of humor, but some people can't. Um, we're not, uh, what would be another thing? We're not sarcastic. Some people's brands need to be really genuine and can't get away with snarky humor. So those are important things to know, like what you're not doing because I think it sometimes defines a uh, voice more importantly than what you are. Um, also, if you're just doing something, you know, if you're on a team for a short period of time, it's important to like do your research <coughs> because when someone's hiring you on for a short period of time to take on the voice of a brand, they're basically giving you the keys to their brand and saying, I trust you to make good decisions and you know what you're doing. I trust you to sound like us. I trust you to do the right thing. You're talking, you have a huge megaphone. You're talking to sometimes millions of people. So go back, look at all their social channels and see what they're saying and what they're talking about. Um, how they're saying it, what types of posts that they're saying, what kind of questions they're asking. And if you can do that, you can get a good handle on, on what they are, what they aren't, and what you know is appropriate. And you'll make mistakes, but that's okay, everybody does. And like, it's not the end of the world if you hear, yeah, you really shouldn't have done that. It, it happens. I've heard that more times than I can know, and that's fine. You know, I would rather try something out and get my hands slapped for it than never try anything interesting. Um, so an example is this was okay for CBC Sports. <laughs> <laughs> not so good for CBC but it worked very well for us. <laughs> Do you find though that most mistakes are quickly forgotten on social media, especially with the volume? It depends, it depends. I mean, for, I think for a lot of brands, yes. For CBC, people have long memories because we're in a unique position um, being the public broadcaster. And so that has some great opportunities and some unique challenges. And so, <laughs> There's a certain care that we have to take, um, but uh, sometimes people do forget quickly. But there is a certain uh, segment of the population that will remember everything, I think. But spelling and grammar errors, especially if you make them for the CBC, people will never let you live down or will never let go. Never make spelling and grammar errors if you can possibly avoid it, because people will not let you forget those. They will be right on top. Uh, Nicole, just on this point, Canadian and American spellings, just your thoughts on this? Uh, we use Canadian spelling, obviously, at the CBC. Um, but I guess it really depends who you're working for. If you're working for Americans, I assume they want American spellings. If you're working for Canadians, it, it depends what they want. But, I mean, we use Canadian spelling and everything. I've used Canadian spelling in most of the work I've done, but I've mostly worked. We would not use anything else. So, issues management or fixing problems. Um, you can get good. <laughs>
if you will, by uh, proactively, if you proactively acknowledge and fix issues. So if you're proactive about things going wrong um, and acknowledge them, you can get a lot more goodwill than pretending they're not or waiting until you're forced to acknowledge them. Um, it, an example is sometimes, yeah, I love that cat. <laughs> An example is sometimes uh, in broadcast we have subtitles and sometimes um, the subtitles are timed in such a way, well sometimes lower thirds, which are the bars that show up at the bottom of your TV to advertise something, are timed in such a way that they cover up the subtitles. And people get very angry about that, understandably. Um, one of the times that happened, I quickly made an uh, image of uh, just the text of the dialogue that was missed by that. And people were still angry about that, but they were like, good job, at least you guys told us what was said, thanks very much, you know, CBC. So, I mean, they were still mad, but at least they knew what happened. They were still complaining, but they were like, okay, at least you told us what happened. Um, and I found even just trying to fix issues or tech issues or other issues, even if you can't help someone, they're still happy with the effort you make. Um, I can't see, can't tell you how many times I've seen people just say, well, thanks for trying, I you couldn't fix it. Your app sucks, but you guys are really cool. <laughs> and I mean, like, if that's, like, we don't want to hear our app sucks, but hearing you guys are really cool, thanks for the effort, that's pretty good. That's still goodwill, that's people loving the brand. Not the app, but the brand. So that's, that's a partial win. Uh, but some people do want to get brought, want to complain. There are some people who just like to complain. So avoid when you're trying to do those sorts of things and help people out getting bonded, drawn into law and exchanges. There's probably a point where you realize this is not going anywhere or being helpful. Just kind of gracefully back out of it. It's hard to tell, but you get a point to it. And remember, if you're doing this sort of live social um, and something goes wrong, especially with a live stream, a lot of complaints can bring you down and you can go home and feel like everyone hates you or hates your brand or hates the work that you're doing just because <coughs> they're mean and awful. <laughs> because they're just tweeting at something. They don't know who they're tweeting at. They're just tweeting at, like, CBC Sports or something like that. Um, you might feel like everyone hates you. You might agree with some of the complaints yourself. Um, try not to take it personally. People just get angry sometimes and they tweet at whoever it is. There. So it's, it's good to just kind of be like, it's okay, you know, it's not about me. And also sometimes I just tell people a bit of ridiculous ones just to kind of laugh. So, uh, just to wrap it up, some good social for live events that's new right now. Uh, Facebook and uh, Facebook Live is pretty interesting. Like I said, Facebook has some uh, pretty convincing numbers about people's discussion about TV and live events on their platform. And uh, Facebook Live is a really great way for stars and, uh, and for broadcasters to easily broadcast live video from their phone for fans and followers. It's also, um, it's also sort of their Periscope pillar, but Periscope is still pretty cool. It was used extensively through the Pan Am Games to interview athletes. I actually took it down to the Pan Am Flame at one point to show people what it was like down there and talk to some tourists who were looking at it, and people had seen that too. Uh, Periscope also displays now in your Twitter feed, so you don't have to leave your Twitter feed to watch a Periscope video. Yeah, which is a real plus, right? So it, it's, um, it's kind of competing with Facebook Live in that sense. But Facebook Live has a lot of stars. Um, I'll zoom in there so you can see Dwayne The Rock Johnson using it um, in a minute. Snapchat stories are also pretty powerful. They allow for really great visuals and um, you know, so really up uh, on the ground, great immediacy. But you really need to be like there to have it, you need to have something interesting to show people. So on the ground in Rio or in Sochi, Snapchat is good. Or like someplace like MTV uses it really well, BuzzFeed uses it really well, but MTV has such access to people coming in, they can like Snapchat somebody like playing guitar and people go crazy for it very quickly. Um, also CBC Toronto um, has just launched a Snapchat and they Snapchat at the NBA All-Star <coughs> which is a great use of it as well, having an NBA All-Star Weekend story where they just kind of 
And as I mentioned, Snappy TV, which is a great platform that was bought by Twitter, and where basically you can put small parts of broadcast video or GIFs or grab screen, screen grabs right out of live video. And through this, uh, the CBC Premium Games actually had what Sports Illustrated called the GIF of the Year when this young Brazilian swimmer won a gold medal and didn't realize he had till he finished, and his eyes were like, and so the Sports Illustrated retweeted us, said it was the GIF of the Year. So, and this is uh, what Facebook Live looks like up front. It's pretty cool. It goes out to all your followers. It gets a pretty crazy reach. Sorry? Can you be verified to use it? I believe you need to be verified to use that. I'm not sure. I think, I, I don't know if you do actually at this point. I think it's been rolled out to more people, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that um, pages have to be verified, but like as personal people, you can use it very well. Yeah. But if you're a page, you have to be verified. If you're a page, you have to be verified. Okay. So you can test it. So this is time for questions or whatever. 